So yesterday, I recorded 20 minutes of a weekly recap for you guys, and it sounded like this. Hey, what's going on, True Blazer fans? It's Tori. Yeah, no, I could not put that out. I accidentally recorded with my laptop mic. Definitely one of the most frustrating mistakes I've ever made, and now I'm finally recording this after that Timberwolves game. I haven't had a chance to re-record it yet. So this is going to be talking about the games before this Timberwolf game. I will also be releasing a Monday mailbag later tonight, and then I will probably recap this Timberwolf game tomorrow. I might do game recaps for the rest rest of the year back to backs I might recap both in one but I'm going to start releasing recaps a little more frequently as we're down to our final six games so first we have to start off with this Brooklyn Nets game we did end up winning but I saw a few mistakes with our defense our Farouk Aminu has been getting beat back door a lot more this year this is just an example of it on a more positive note though Ennis Cantor hit two threes in this Brooklyn Nets game is only two threes as a blazer uh, he's just not a good enough shooter to shoot him consistently but when it's open near the end of the shot clock this isn't a bad shot. And then again, our defense, you cannot let Jared Dudley get to the rim. And then Jared Dudley and 1-3, Zach Collins, you gotta be smarter closing out on three-point shooters. We can't have those fouls. And again, Jared Dudley just dissecting our defense. Ed Davis gets a lay-in, stares down our bench, which makes it nice that Evan Turner stared down Ed Davis after he dunked on him. But again, we cannot give up so much dribble penetration. Karis Levert once again right to the rim portland was able to keep pace though because his big men were hitting threes zach collins hits two in a row right here it was really nice to see him hit shots and his three-point shot is looking a little better lately and his canter to zach collins on this pass was beautiful to watch i love big to big passing great feed by ennis canter and i think ennis could possibly replace a little bit of nurkic's passing if he looks for it a bit more and if portland decides to try and use him like that now this play was a textbook charge seth curry beat the guy to the spot doesn't matter if he's moving if he's beating him to the spot it's a charge i was in the motor center booing that call because that was a terrible blocking call and then this possession i'm going to pause it so you can see the setup jake lehman is guarding joe harris who's setting a screen on yusuf nurkic whose assignment just set an on ball screen now jake lehman is in perfect help side position right here but he doesn't really pay much attention to the pick and roll and instead is just locked in onto his man and actually moves out of his great help side position and lets jared allen get this dunk i think jake lehman could be a very good defender i think he just needs to be a little bit more aware when playing defense off the ball and this is just an example of it but that was a really good set from kenny atkinson and the brooklyn nets and it's Cantor, another three. Like I said, it's not a terrible shot with the shot clock winding down. And then Damian Lillard had Ennis Cantor available here. And Ennis Cantor was feeling it. He didn't roll, he popped. But Damian Lillard decides to shoot a contested fadeaway mid range, which is still a good shot for Damian Lillard. And he hits those. Now, this play right here is a good example of off ball defense from Rodney Hood. He digs down just enough to get the steal on Karis Levert, but he's also close enough to his man that if his man caught a kick out pass, he would have been able to at least contest the three. This is great off ball defense. And and these type of plays result in fast break lay-ins. I think Portland going into the postseason will need to try and create more plays in transition and it starts with good defense like this. Seth Curry's been awesome lately and I'll talk about him in the Minnesota Timberwolf recap. Fast forwarding to late in the fourth quarter, I don't understand how this is not an and one for Damian Lillard. That's obvious body contact. I thought the refs in this game were terrible. Now Portland down one, eight seconds left and Seth Curry comes up with a great defensive play. His defense has been impressive lately as well and he turns it into a fast break opportunity and he gets fouled by Spencer Dinwiddie. Now it would have been nice if Seth Curry could have iced this game by hitting two free throws but he made one and at least brought it to overtime. It was a great defensive play. Fast forward to the end of overtime. Portland is up two with 12 seconds left and Rodney Hood just does this. I don't really understand what happened with Rodney Hood here but it was almost like we were willing to give up a lane which I don't understand. The help side defense wasn't ready to help. Alfred Kaminu did not rotate over he was way too late and it was just a wide open lane we tend to give up these types of plays way too often in clutch time defense but at this point i would have rather us just not even call a timeout let damian lillard bring the ball up against a non-set defense that probably wouldn't have been ready to trap this is a lot better position than this because this is what portland got out of the timeout and we all knew it was coming it's what they do every time try and get damian the ball brooklyn knew it was coming so they sent a trap at him at this point though you need blazers moving up the court to try and 
and catch an outlet pass because if Dame gets the ball out of the trap, it's a four on three opportunity, but the Blazers just kind of stand around. And by the time Seth Curry pops up the far sideline, it's a little bit too late. And Damian Lillard ends up shooting a double clutch, double teamed half court three point attempt. I think he would have gotten a lot better shot if we just didn't call a timeout. I don't understand why we have to call a timeout just to get Dame the ball in the backcourt. And then tragedy struck, Nurkic got hurt. Props to Anthony Simons for stepping to the line and calmly sinking two free throws. His first pressure moment in his NBA career. Props to the kid for stepping in and hitting two clutch free throws. And then after the Nurkic injury, this game didn't feel the same. Brooklyn got really sloppy and Portland was able to hit a three here with Rodney Hood and basically iced the game. It was a good win to get after such a tough moment watching Nurkic get hurt. This was a game we won because we really scored the ball well, but our defense is going to need to be able to pick it up a little bit more if we're going to have postseason success. And there was definitely spurts of really good defense. I just wish it was a little bit more consistent because there were stretches where we gave up far too many easy inside looks. And again, the refs were awful. Somehow this was not a foul. Jared Dudley hugged Rodney Hood in the air. <laughs> no call. All right, refs, that was terrible. So Portland pulled out this game in their next game, their first game without Nurkic and CJ was against the Chicago Bulls, a team that was already bad and a team that had an injury list that was almost as long as its entire roster. This is who they were starting. There's really nothing to go over from this game because I'm not sure this Bulls team could have even made the G League playoffs. This Bulls team was awful. So instead, we're going to skip right on to the Atlanta Hawks, which was a team that was playing really well lately, beating some good teams. Trey Young's been playing out of his mind. I mean, look at this three-point shot. That's insane. This was one of Portland's better defensive efforts I've seen in a while, because lately Atlanta is a really good offensive team. As I said earlier, I do want the Blazers to push more in transition, and plays like this I love. Jake Lehman getting the ball in the open court, where he's much better driving to the hoop than he is in the half court. And his canter has been replacing Yusuf Nurkic offensively pretty well, rolling like Yusuf, posting up like Yusuf. And his canter has definitely been a huge pickup, especially after Nurkic went down. Down. And then transition opportunities like this will be key in the playoffs, as I do feel like we'll struggle to score in the half court offense without Nurkic, and teams will continuously trap Dame. Transition buckets neutralizes that. We had a lot of good defensive possessions where Atlanta still scored. That's an example right there. Alfaruk Aminu and his body control and finishing has been really impressive lately and much improved this season. And then this Dame layup looks easy, but maintaining his balance and that footwork right there was very, very tough. And then I really like this defensive possession. Portland throwing a trap with under five seconds left. It ends up in a turnover from Trey Young. I do like switching up looks like this and throwing things at the offense that they don't expect. Trey Young wasn't ready for this. I think Myers Leonard is a little bit better hedging and trapping on screens than he is sagging. So with Myers guarding the pick and roll, I do want to see him do things like this. And then as I said, Atlanta was hitting tough shots. Portland was playing really good defense. I mean, Kevin Herter right there, are you kidding me? Vince Carter started hitting threes, but they were all contested. It was all very good defense. Zach Collins there, that's a really good contest. That's all you can do sometimes. Zach Collins' offensive rebounding has been much better lately. Look at him dig it out of three. Atlanta Hawks kick it out. Curry hits the three. I don't know if it's more strength from Zach or better effort, but he's been rebounding really well. Then Evan Turner posting up. I do really like this against smaller guards, especially when his shot isn't falling. And then all these plays are indicative of what happened all game. Vince Carter hitting contested threes. Alfred Caminu controlling the ball and finishing inside. Zach Collins playing great defense and that was a goal 10 but the next possession is more great defense from the Blazers even though the Hawks still end up scoring off a loose ball. Seth Curry popping off hitting shots like he has been in the past few games. And Portland was able to pull out this win. Anthony Simons looked good in garbage time. The body control on this shot is amazing especially for a guy as skinny as he is and as inexperienced as he is. This dude is going to be the 2022 or 2023 sixth man in the year. I'm calling it right now. So Blazers were able to get a good win. The next Next game, they ended up facing off against the Detroit Pistons, and there's really nothing to show from that game. It was just a case of Portland getting good shots, but hitting pretty much nothing. Tired legs, second night of a back-to-back. -back. Without CJ and Nurkic, that was just a tough game where they missed shots. Damian Lillard really, really struggled, and we really needed him to be able to have a good game in order to pull that out. So it was a tough loss, but really nothing to take away there. And that's all the action from the week leading up to the Timberwolves game. In that Timberwolves recap, I will be able to get a little bit more in-depth on certain talking points and I'll be able to recap a little bit more of the game. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, True Blazer fans. Stay tuned for Monday Mailbag coming later tonight after this video. And with that, I'm out of here. This has been Tori. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Go Blazers.